Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you for being here. Um, it is uh, clear from your testimony uh, that sequestration will have very real threats to our national security. It would harm our military communities and it would damage our military readiness. And as always is the case, uh, our soldiers, our sailors, our airmen, our Marines, and our Coast Guardsmen will be the bill payers if we fail to meet our obligations. And I want to associate myself with the remarks of the Senator from Missouri. She's spot on. Many of us in both parties voted for the BCA uh, in the summer of 2011 uh, to avoid defaulting on our good credit rating. It's on our shoulders to put the national interest ahead of the petty partisan sniping that's been occurring uh, in this town as regards to the sequester. And I, I really want to say that, uh, frankly, if we allow this kind of harm to be done to our country, it won't make a damn bit of difference who wins the majority in 2014. So let's solve this problem. Uh, if we uh, can't reach compromise, and let's work with you all to mitigate uh, the effects. Uh, General Ordierno, um, if I could, I'd like to uh, turn to the Army's training budget. And I understand that if sequestration takes hold, that uh, mm -hmm. training above the battalion level will essentially stop, except for units preparing for Afghanistan. And my concern, if you, if you begin to see that take hold, there's a ripple effect that then might uh, result in increased uh, tour lengths for deployed troops. We've been really working on ops tempo. We've really been trying to increase the amount of dwell time. My concern is that we then break faith with our troops and the men and women in uniform if this takes hold. Could you speak to that? Yes, yes, Senator. We are <clears throat> currently we have funded the next group of units that would go into Afghanistan. We cannot fund the group that comes after them, and that would be done in the later part of 13. Okay. So what that means is. The initial replacements that go in in the beginning of 14 are funded. Those who would come in later in the year are not. And so it would take them much longer to be prepared. And so we'll have to make a decision somewhere along the line to either extend those already there or send people there that are not ready. And I choose not to send people there that will not be ready. So that's the cascading impact we have on this real problem we have in the 13 budget in terms of our operations and maintenance funds. Thank, thank you for that clarification. Another reason we've got to get this right um, here in the Congress. General Welsh, if I could turn to uh, you. Of course, we proudly host Space Command uh, in Colorado Springs. Uh, last week, uh, you issued a press release that warned that sequestration could lead to major cuts to essential programs. And I want to quote here, uh, quote, reduce some missile warning and space surveillance 24-7 hour operations to eight hours per day operations impacting national uh, missile warning, missile defense, space situational awareness, and the intelligence community, end of quote. That would indicate that uh, Space Command wouldn't be able to fulfill their basic mission requirements if sequestration goes into effect. Is, is that an accurate assessment? How would ballistic missile warning, for example, be affected by reductions in space surveillance operations? And I would add, I just walked through the ante room, and of course our friends in North Korea are at it again. Uh, they've just had another test. Uh, you might speak uh, specifically about that situation as well. But. Thank you, Senator. Um, the Space Command actually in their space operating budget has a, the advantage of, being, of having a fairly wide uh, uh, latitude of where to take the money from under the cuts of sequestration. It, it, compared to some other accounts, it actually gives them a little bit more freedom. So what they've done is they've removed, uh, when you talk about going 24-7 coverage in some of these sites, down to eight hours a day as opposed to 24 hours a day. What they've been able to do is do that in the sites that provide redundancy and provide capacity in their system. So missile warning is not impacted. We still have the capacity to do that. Uh, that threat to the nation will be detected. But the redundancy in that capability is what's now impacted in the background. Uh, it, it's, it's the operating funds to power radars for 24 hours a day. When they're cut, we have to take that money from somewhere. We've taken it from the backup redundant part of the systems. The secondary uh, capabilities of those major radars. That's what's actually happened. Senator. Thank you for that clarification. I see my time's up. I just again want to urge the uh, SASC, the Senate Armed Services Committee, which is known for bipartisanship, to lead the way on finding a compromise that could involve revenue, uh, strengthening our entitlement programs, and some targeted spending cuts. Uh, we could do that in this committee, show the Senate the way forward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.